So, um, all right, so let's get into um, the microscope, okay? I don't know if you ever had a, um, a lecture like this about how the microscope works. One shouldn't take too long, but I gotta introduce you to the different parts of the microscope um, because that's what they want you to know with this departmental practice. All right, so let's start talking about the parts of the microscope. Now most of the microscopes will look something similar to this that you'll see in the cupboards down below or wherever you keep the microscopes. Uh, so a few terms on here. First off, they're, they're not heavy, but they're not light, and, but they are expensive. You know, each one of these is probably around three, four thousand dollars. So um, the best way to do it is put your hand on the base, all right, and then the other hand on the arm, and that should make it so it won't bobble, you know, wobble and fall all over. Okay, so that's how you transport it from wherever you're going to take it from to your tabletop. Okay, and vice versa if you put it back over there. Now, a few things. Um, okay. These are what we call binocular because there's two ocular lenses here, okay? There are some microscopes that just have one, call those mon monocular, but the discal, we have binocular. And you could actually move them this way to adjust it because everyone's eyes are different spaces in between where the nose is, okay? Um, so that's the ocular lenses. These ocular lenses are what we call 10X. We're gonna be talking about magnification, how close can you get? So if you actually could take one of these off and look like this and put a penny over there, you're looking at it about 10x, 10 times the, uh, the magnification of what you're seeing. Most of them are 10x. There are occasionally some that say 15x. Either way, you'll see it someplace written on the ocular lens. Okay? This is also called the eyepiece. Remember how I said to master A and P1, or A and P for that matter, you, know, you need to know how to say one structure about 20 different ways. So this is the ocular lens or it's also known as the eyepiece, okay? Um, then you're gonna have this place over here called the stage. The stage is where you're gonna put your slide on. And when you get closer to it, I'm gonna, you're gonna see it with a little video, you'll be able to see how to put the slide on. There's this little lever, yeah, there's this little lever that you put the slide in the, uh, uh, in the frame. It kind of looks like this. Um, and you're looking down on the stage. So you have this kind of setup like this. Yeah. Uh, I don't use scantrons, so I, I, I would get them. They're in her office. I know she has like some, but I can get into her office. Okay. Um, the other place to get it is adjunct office. But it's Friday, so I don't think you can actually get there. So it is what it is. That's right. Exactly. That's right. All right, good luck. Okay. okay, so what's going to happen here is this is what you're looking at. You're looking at this whole stage that's over here, but there's going to be this, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a frame that this, your slide will go on. The slide is actually about this big. I'm exaggerating, but it's that big. And there's this little piece, there's this little lever over here that you can slide this back, it's spring-loaded, and this actually moves a little bit, and then you could actually put this part, it's not really drawn to scale, but you can put this part over here, and then this part will go like this. Does that make sense? So it'll hold it in there, okay? So that when you move the slide, or the, the stage up and down, left and right, this is actually, um, position so it won't move around. You'll see it, you'll have to play with it a little bit, but you'll, you'll see how it works, it's not too bad. What I'm saying is you don't put it underneath this, you put it in between the two arms, okay? And it's spring-loaded, this little, little lever thing. All right, so that's the stage over here, and you'll see that mechanism that's happening on here, okay? Um, okay, you also have this, it's called a turret or nose piece, and you can see there's a bunch of different uh, lenses, long lenses that are on there. We usually have four, okay? These lenses are called objective lenses, mm -hmm. and they have different magnifications on each one, okay? Um, they're colored, and they're universally colored too. So what it is, the objective lenses are going to be um, 4X, 10x, 
Uh, no, yeah, 40x and 100x. Okay. This usually is red, yellow, right? yellow um, blue. But the numbers will be on those objective lenses. This will, the 4x will be very short. The 100x is the longest. Okay. How you figure out what the magnification is what, of whatever you're looking at, you're going to do a multiplication. I guess that's what you need in order to come into A and P1 is to know how to multiply. And it's pretty easy. Usually the eyepiece, as I said, is about 10x. So you just multiply it. If you're using that eyepiece and you're using the red, therefore, you're now going to be at whatever you're looking at is going to be 40x, 100x, 400x, and 1000x. Does that make sense? It's just a multiplication. All right? So on your papers, if you're going to draw pictures, if that's how you choose to do this, the ones in red, that's what you would put on there. Everything that you're going to look at in your uh, lab books, everything that I'm going to put in for your PowerPoints and stuff will be the red stuff. It, how I got that, it was because of the multiplication. We just assume you do the multiplication. Don't worry about that. You'll have to do it for, let's say, the practical exam if that's a question on there. But what we're going to be utilizing is what's in red. Okay? And that's pretty important because we all know that if you look at something at 40x and look at something at 1,000x, they, they could be two different things, but they look alike. The magnification is crucial for you to understand how close are we looking at. All right? Does that make sense? You can't really see a nucleus at 40x. You can see it at 400 or 1,000x. Okay? Okay. A couple other things on here. There's two knobs here, there's a, or dials. There's a big dial, and there's a small dial that's within it. And you'll see that. Big dials here, small dials here. Okay? This. All right? Big dial, small dial. Okay? The big dial is the coarse um, tuning. Okay? You're going to do the coarse tuning. Now, what's that going to do is watch the stage over here. When I move the, the coarse you should be able to see it move up and down try quite drastically, okay? And then when I move the smaller one, the, what we call the fine tuning, you don't see it really move up because it's very fine, okay? It's not, it is going up and down, but it's very minute. The idea about focusing is that you're going to put whatever you want in, uh, that you want to focus, put in the center of your, what we call field of view. Whatever you can see when looking into those eyepieces, that area that we can see is a field of view. There's going to be stuff you can't see that's not in your field of view. You've got to move the slide so that you can actually get it into your field of view. So whatever you want to actually get a close-up with and you want to concentrate and focus on, you put in the center of your field of view and then use the coarse focus first. And you do this under low magnification first so you know what you're looking at. Okay, it's really not low magnification, we call it scanning. That's a scanning uh, lens. That's low magnification, high magnification, we call it oil. Everything I'm explaining is on the next few slides. So you put that in the center of whatever you want to look at, and then you use the coarse focus to focus it. But you know, you do that and it's like it's a little bit still blurry, so you're going to use a fine focus to really just fine tune things to get what you want. Okay? Once you get that in focus, and you want to get closer, and it's in the center of what you're seeing, then you move the objective lens to the next one, if you choose to do so. You might just say, you know, I just need to look at it like this. And certain things you can. But if you want to get it all the way up to 1,000, you go from the lower magnification, gradually higher. When you get to this next one over here, what's nice about these microscopes, they're what we call par focal. Par focal. Yep. It'll be up there. Oh. Par focal means that it stays in focus every time you get closer. It's a beautiful thing compared to the 1950s. 
all right? It stays in focus, it's called parfocal. Parfocal. However, P-A-R-F-O-C-A-L. The only thing is, is that you, as it gets closer, the parfocal is not perfect. You won't have to touch the coarse focus, you may have to touch the fine focus, okay? You don't wanna to touch the coarse focus anymore after this, because what, like I showed you, that stage goes up and down quite drastically. And those, these objective lenses are longer and longer. So if you choose to want to change the coarse focus at here, that, and you don't realize what you're doing, what's happening is that microscope slide is gonna get closer to the objective lens in a very quick way, and I'm gonna hear crack, right? Because you went right into the lens because it went too fast, okay? So that's what's happening with that. Now, yeah, well, if it happens, and I, I'm not gonna make a big thing if it happens, I'm gonna make a big thing about it if it's your fourth one in, in 10 minutes. Yes, I almost did it one time. Yeah. No, no, it's no, fine. It went too close and I'm like, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's totally fine. I'm not expecting you guys to be doing research and stuff and using this all the time. You know, I, you know I've know, i used microscopes virtually all my life, but, um, but I, I, you know, I, I just, you know, if it breaks, it breaks. I'm not gonna make a big thing. It's just four in 10 minutes, you know, something's going on here, okay? All right, now, the light, okay? The light, um, this is where it's gonna be, I can't really teach this, I don't know how someone could actually teach this, because it's just gonna be trial and error, and because it depends on the slides that you're looking at. As you get closer and closer, the light is going to get darker and darker. And it depends on the stain of it, if it's a dark stain, a light stain, all right? So I can't really teach you how to do that because every slide is gonna be totally different. You're gonna go through 35 slides and maybe three days to do this or a week to do this. It's gonna take some time and you're just gonna be able to work faster with it, okay? But what I can teach you is that there's three ways that we can actually change the light and you just have to be trial and error and see, well, that's not working. I'm doing all the way this way, all the way that way. But, you know, Dr. Gamal said I could use this too. So let me try that and this. You know what I'm saying? For me and for, not an, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but for someone who uses microscopes, what I'm going to explain to you would take longer than what I would actually do. It probably will, if I had to do this with a microscope to change the lighting and stuff, probably take me about two to three seconds. Okay? but you need to know what each one does. And like I said, these words over here and the usage can appear on the practical exam. That's why I'm doing this. So this is what's happening. Here is the stage. You're looking at the side view, okay? And there's a little hole in there for the light to come in, okay? Up here, you're going to have your objective lens. Over here, you will have your microscope slide. And your specimen is here, whatever you're looking at. Okay, so far so good? Okay, now, the microscope's different. This does the... So we have light source over here. Okay? And we can adjust the light source. For these microscopes, the on-off switch for the light source is back here where the plug is. It's different for some other microscopes. Okay? The light source over here is this red knob for this particular microscope. This will actually make it brighter or dimmer, okay? And we can adjust that if we wanted to. That's one thing we can adjust. Then we have something called the condenser. Okay? The condenser, let me make it a little smaller. The condenser's here. And what the condenser is going to do is that the rays that are coming in, they come on different angles. And 
And what the condenser is going to do is just keep on going and go this way. But what the condenser does is makes the rays go straight. Condenses them. Okay? Condenses them that way so that we could have a focus of the light going up instead of going on angles. Okay? You'll learn about photons and all that kind of stuff in physics, but I'm kind of milking it for you guys. Okay? So that's the condenser. And we could actually make it more condensed to light or less because we can actually make this go up and down. Okay? Making it more intense or not. And there's a little knob on the side over here that will do that. Here's the condenser here. You'll see, let me do it this way. There's a knob here on the side. Okay? Small knob. If I'm turning that, I'm going to show you this way. You can see that condenser going up and down. See it? Okay? So that's another way we could change the intensity of the light. Then we also have, um, we have another one that's like this, and there's a little lever. This is what we call the diaphragm or the iris, and there's a little hole over here. Okay? That iris is very similar to the iris of your eye. So if I'm looking down on it, it's going to be round like this with a lever. And there's a hole there. When I move the lever a certain way like this, this gets bigger. When I slide it the other way, it's going to get smaller. It's the iris of your eye going like this. That's going to control how much light is actually going to go up. So we have this thing that's going to go like this. Does that make sense? And those rays will come straight in here. And when you have that lever, you'll feel it around here. Yeah, here. So you can slide it. You really can't see it, but it's, you, you'll be able to feel it when you have it in your hand. You can do that. And that's called the diaphragm or the iris. Okay? So those are the different ways we could do that. Okay? So we have the, um, the light source. The condenser. and the iris or diaphragm. And you just have to, that's why I said I can't really teach it. I could show you the different ways. You just have to do trial and error. Every slide's gonna be different. Every slide is gonna be different also by how close you wanna see something. But you now know that there's three ways that you could actually play around with this. Okay? Questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> The lens system, just a quick review about this. We have the eyepieces, and in this microscope, it's binocular, because there's two that you can put your eyes on. And you could adjust that. The magnification is usually either 10x or 15x. Most of these are 10x. The nose piece is that turret that's going to have all those objective lenses on there. Okay? And the objective lens is, is, like I said, 4x is going to be the scanning lens. The low power is going to be the 10x. And the high dry lens is going to be 40x. We have another one that's going to be 100x, and it's going to need a special reagent to actually utilize, oil. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So the magnification is you just, mag you just multiply the eyepiece or the ocular lens and the objective lens that you're utilizing. Pretty easy. Oh, yeah. Okay? That's pretty easy. And then like I told you about the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment. You do the coarse first and then the fine. Mm -hmm. Yep, you just multiply. Yeah, I can never do that. Okay? So the order that you're going to do this with, and this is, like I said, it takes longer to explain than for you to actually do, 
but you adjust your eyepiece first, the ocular lens first, for your particular eyes. Then you're going to raise the condenser to stage, adjust the condenser and the diaphragm to the, uh, the amount of light that you want it to come in. You're going to go from low magnification to high magnification. Always that way. Never start at 100 power. You don't know what the heck you're looking at. So always go from a low to a high. In fact, a lot of times, take the microscope right off the, the trays and stuff before you put on your mic. Uh, I'm sorry, put, take the microscope slide off the trays even before you put on the microscope. Shine it to the light. At least you have an idea of what the shape is that you're looking at the whole, you know, with your naked eye. And then you can put it down and you have an idea. Use the coarse and the fine adjustments and focus perfectly first and center your item in your field of view. This is all going to be what I call par focal so that it will stay in focus every time you change that objective lens. One thing you might have to do is change the lighting, of course, by these three mechanisms and or the fine tuning, but you shouldn't have to touch the coarse focus at all. You do this kind of stuff and you will prevent the slide from cracking, okay? Again, if it cracks, I understand it's, you don't work with these all the time, but four and ten minutes, you know, I'm going to hear crack, crack, crack. You know, uh, just let me know. Don't be shy about it because you're probably doing something wrong and want to help you, okay? You know. Um, okay, now i got to talk about resolution. You can't magnify something unlimited, you know, like unlimited. You, can, you can't go up and up and keep on looking at something closer and closer and closer. You can't do it. There's some restrictions. And these light microscopes that we have are sometimes called the compound microscopes. There's some limitation. We can only go up to about 1,000 power. That's about it. And then we need to use bigger microscopes or better lenses, that kind of thing. So there's some limit. All right. It's when we lose what we call resolution. We, it gets blurry when two things that we're looking at are too close apart and they kind of overlap with each other when we're looking at with the, micros, with the uh, lenses. So what we can do is dependent on what we call the wavelength of the light and the numerical aperture of light also, or the lens also. Okay? Don't worry about those. I won't ask you, but for people who are into physics and in photography, that's where that comes in. All right? So what it is is that the aperture is that we use our compound microscope. These are pretty good to see two objects as close as what we call 0.2 micrometers, which is pretty damn close, okay? But it's not really close when we want to look at, let's say, inside the cell and look at all the organelles there, because they're even closer than that. You just can't see them, okay? That's where you're going to need better microscopes, electron microscopes. They cost like a half a million dollars or so, all right? not going to be, unless you want your laboratory fees to go up, uh, we're going to keep it and we're happy with these compound microscopes for what we need to do. Okay? But we have something called a refractive index, the bending of light. Now this I know you do see. In a hot day like today, you probably want to go into your pool. And every medium has what we call a refractive index. If I have a pole that's right here and you're looking at it through the air, it's going to look straight because the light is going through only one medium, air, that what your field of view is going to be. But if I take that pole and I put it in a pool, now on the outside, if I'm outside, I'm looking at the pole, it looks straight. When I look into the pool, it looks bent because I'm looking at it through air and then I'm looking at it through water. Does that make sense? The, the way the light goes, it bends if it's going through another medium. And when it bends, it obscures what you're looking at and creates blurriness. Notice that if I was downstairs with God, or not downstairs, but in the pool, underwater, and someone put the pole in there and I have goggles on, I'm looking at it, it looks straight. But if I'm looking up underneath the water, it bends out there. Because now I'm looking through water and then looking at it through air. So every medium has some sort of what we call refractive index. And it changes. Okay? So air has a refractive index. Glass does. Water does. Oil does. All mediums do. So look what we have here. Here you have... 
glass, air, glass. You see it? And I'm going to go up there and look. So what's going to happen here is that if I want to look at this, the light goes through the glass, but then it bends. Okay? And when it bends, what you perceive as, it's blurry. We need something in the middle here that has the same refractive index as glass here and glass here. Then we wouldn't have an issue. I mean, we could put a block of glass there, but that's not going to be very good if we're going to make that objective lens going up and down. You know, seriously, here things crack. So we have something else that the people, I guess, in the 19, I don't know, I'm guessing 1940s or so, 50s, 40s, 50s, they actually found something and created something that ha that's liquid and has the same refractive index as glass. Okay? And that's what we call immersion oil. See, what happens here is that if we put a drop of immersion oil over here and it touches, now I'm, I'm making this, this drop of oil huge just for your viewing pleasure, but it's not this big. And what happens here is that this bending the light isn't going to happen. It's going to go straight up. Because this has the same refractive index as this and this. So now it's just going through like a glass, basically. Does that make sense? Okay. So it will not make it bend? Right. It'll bend, but it'll go right up there. You see how it is? There's your oil. If we didn't have oil over here, it would bend, and it would appear as blurry. But it doesn't really reach the lens, right? Yeah, it does. This is for your. This is exaggerated for your viewing pleasure. But there's still air in there. Nope. This here and this here is called working distance. It's very close. I mean, it's like just before your two fingers come together. It's very close. So you put a drop of oil there, it's going to, it's oil, it's not water, it's oil, so it's pretty thick. It's actually going to touch here and here. Okay, it's very close. The objective lens to here and here. Because the only place you're going, the only time you're going to use this is on the last objective lens. The oil immersion lens. Do not use it for the first three. Just the last one. If you want to look at it a thousand power. Anything before 1,000 power, you don't want, you want to look at a 400 power, you don't need the oil. It's only for that last one, the white one, the longest one, okay? And that one gets very close to the slide, but it doesn't, it's not going to touch it, okay? But it's very, very close, okay? You'll see when you, when you use it, you'll see it's, it's pretty close, okay? Questions about this oil? And I got a, a microscope to, or a, a video to show you this, this little thing, okay? So oil immersion only used for, like I said, 100 objective lens, which that times the eyepiece is 1,000, okay? While at 40 x, uh, 40 objective lens, you put it, like, you got, you'll see, you got to put it halfway so you can have a working area to put the drop of oil. Uh, oil is this. You know, it has a little nozzle on it. You just drop it right on it. But you need a working area to put the drop there. Other places have like a little rod that dips in there and you can just drop the oil on there. So oil immersion oil. I don't I, Yeah, I just, um, <laughs> it's, it's the people who, uh, who discovered or created this, not discovered, but whoever invented it. Um, people have no social life. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, but it works. It works. Uh, it is oil though, so it gets, you know, it gets on your hand. Okay. So you put a drop of it on there and then put the objective lens. And when you're done with it, you, there's lens paper in your drawers, okay, wherever. There's going to be lens paper. Wipe off that, that oil. Wipe it off the, when you're done with the slide, wipe it off the slide, wipe it off the, oil, uh, the objective lens. Because if it's left on there, it gets, it becomes very crusty after about a week or so. And it is a pain in the neck to remove. So they have to like go in with xylene and stuff and try to remove it. So it's easier when it's wet. And you just wipe it off. That's all. Okay? 
Um, so we rotate the nose piece. I'll show you the video of this thing and you'll see. Okay? But don't put the oil on the other lenses. Okay? If you do by accident, it's fine. I understand that. But make sure you wipe it off. Okay? Otherwise, it's going to stay blurry for all other students future on. Okay? Uh, clean up, unplug, cool down, remove the slide, clean the lens. I got a little video to show you this. Okay? Uh, transport has explained to you how to use it. Uh, the wet mount. Uh, basically, what you're going to do, this is we're going to do this on our next lab session together, is we're going to put a drop of blood on there, sheet blood on this in this case, but any kind of liquid. Uh, you're going to put a drop of it on here. So this is your microscope slide, and I'll reiterate this later on. You're going to put a drop of, let's say, blood, okay? A drop of blood over here. And then we have what we call a cover slip, which is uh, about a square... Um, piece of glass or plastic, all right, so that it actually spreads it. And what you're going to do, you put this cover slip, you touch it on the end over here, and put it on like a 45 degree angle, and then you just let it drop. And it's going to spread and milk that blood across. You don't need a lot of blood, you just need a little drop, because it'll spread across there. So what you're going to look at is, if this is your slide looking down on it, your cover slip goes on top of here like that, and now the blood is just very thin smeared across here. And now you want it very thin so that you can see through it. You don't want it the blood too thick, then light can't get through it. You don't know what you're looking at. So you want it really thin, okay? Um, and that's what that is. Yeah, you, like this, and you just, just drop it right on there. But we'll go over that uh, next live session. Okay, so let me um, show you the two. Any questions about that? I know it's hard. It's, it's easier when you have the microscope in your hand. Let me show you the two videos. Here in the science labs, each of you should find a microscope either in the cabinet at your workstations or they may be located in the cabinets at the front or sides of the room. Locate the microscopes in your laboratory and follow these instructions carefully. Always grasp the microscope by the curved area called the arm with one hand and be sure the second hand is under the bottom or base. That is the proper way to move and transport the microscope. Position your scope in front of your chair and be sure the arm faces away from you. Unwrap the power cord on the back and plug it into a power receptacle near you. Look at the base area on the left side toward the back. You should find a black wheel that serves as the on-off switch for the light. Turn on your microscope and observe for light. If your microscope has an on-off switch that is a wheel, some light adjustment can be made by rolling the wheel. At the top of the microscope facing you, you should find two eyepieces or oculars. When using the scope, be sure you look into both eyepieces at the same time. By manually adjusting the black plate beneath the eyepieces, you can change the space between the eyepieces to fit you more comfortably. Finally, so that dust and debris will not be observed, you may wish to clean the oculars with lens paper. Please be aware that lens paper is the only material that can be used to clean any of the glass associated with the microscopes. Do not use Kleenex or paper toweling as they will scratch the glass surfaces. I have found that I like to wipe my slide first just to be sure no lint or fingerprint grease gets in the way. To make a wet mount, a drop of water or other specified liquid is placed in the center of the slide. Next, the item to be viewed is added and mixed within the drop. Then the cover slip is positioned at a 45 degree angle near the drop and moved slowly to the edge of the drop, then gently lowered over the drop. I like to look for bubbles, and if present, try to gently tap the cover slip to disperse them. Once you have made a fresh slide, you will want to examine it as soon as possible. Find the stage of your microscope. Be sure it is as far down as possible, and use the coarse adjustment knob to lower it if necessary.
Place your slide with the cover slip up on the stage and secure it to the stage using the stage clips. Once secured, the slide can be moved left, right, forward, or backward by use of the slide moving knobs attached below the stage on the right side. Now, look just above the stage and observe a rounded piece called the revolving nose piece, which is holding four cylinders of various lengths. These cylinders are objective lenses and each has a different magnification capacity. The shortest one, marked with a red line, is called the scanning lens, and it has a magnification of four times. On your microscope, turn the nose piece clockwise until you have the scanning lens over your specimen. On the side of the arm toward the base, you will find two knobs. The outermost one is called the fine adjustment knob, and the one immediately beside it is the coarse adjustment knob. While observing from the side of the microscope, slowly turn the coarse adjustment knob to move slide and objective closer together. One last thing you may need to do is to increase or decrease the brightness of your field by controlling the amount of light. Light enters a microscope from a light source on the base into an area known as the diaphragm and up to a part called the condenser. On the diaphragm is a lever that can be moved left to right which helps increase or decrease light. It works much like the pupil area of your own eye. In addition, a condenser adjustment knob on the left side can move the condenser up and down. The end of the lab is a critical time for microscope care. How you put up your microscope is extremely important. Listen carefully. Your instructor may add personal comments, but let's start now. Turn the nose piece so the scanning lens is in place. Use the coarse adjustment knob to lower the stage as far down as possible. Remove slides from the microscope. If any of your lenses were dirty, clean them carefully with lens paper. Check the stage and clean up any debris that might be on it. Move the stage area so the black mechanical slide bar is flush with the right side of the stage. Be sure the stage is flush at the front. Be sure the iris diaphragm is completely open by turning the lever to the left. Use a condenser knob to be sure the condenser is all the way up. Turn off the light, unplug the scope, and wrap the cord around the clips on the back side of the arm. Open the door and slide out the microscope tray if available. Place the scope on the tray or cabinet shelf with the arm facing outward. Slide in and close the door. To focus your slide, you'll place it on the stage of your microscope. You'll begin with 4x and using your course adjustment knob. Raise the stage of the scope up as far up as possible using your course adjustment knob. Look through the ocular lenses and turn the course adjustment knob till the die you see is clear. Then you'll proceed to 10x objective. You'll use your fine adjustment knob to again focus until the die you see is clear and not blur. Then you'll move on to 40x. What you should notice with each progressive objective, the space between the slide and the objective has decreased. That space is known as working distance. Under 40x, you'll use your fine, fine adjustment to focus until your image is clear, is clear. We currently have our slide focused with a total magnification of 400 times at the 40x objective. To focus under 100x, the oil immersion objective, you'll need to 
Move the objectives so there's a space where you can place immersion oil. To place a drop of oil on the slide, there should be a space where you've moved the two objectives and one drop of oil can go into that space. It will look like your slide will break, but since these microscopes are parfocal, they won't. The function of oil is to decrease the refraction of light and generate a clear image when you focus using your fine adjustment knob. Um, the only thing I do want to just make sure, here's another thing that might appear on the exam, all right, uh, for the letter E. When you look at the letter E, it looks like there's a newspaper clipping, a letter E, okay? But when you look under the microscope, it's not the way, if you put it on your mic, on your slide like this, it doesn't appear when you, like that, when you look in the ocular lens. Instead, it's reverse and it's flipped. So it, it's... I have to figure this out. It, it does. Is it upside down and backwards? Yeah, it does that. Did I do it right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you want to make the slide move to the left, what you're looking at, it looks it's going to the right. If you wanted to make it go up, you got to make it go down. It does the opposite. It does the opposite. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Hint, hint. Make sure you understand that for the test. Okay? Um, okay, so that's why I wanted to just make sure with that.